Many thanks for making a date on this holiday edition of Business Life with me, Imano Abuaji. We have a list little now for the very first story. The Finance Ministry has finally confirmed its indebtedness to the group Indum after months of denials. This is coming after the group took the issue to court, claiming over 2.2 billion cities debt owed. This morning, this report. Documents cited by Joy Business show that the ministry, after its initial audit, put the debt at 30.3 million CDs. This is coming after months of contesting Group Indum's claim that it owes it such an amount. There are even reports that the ministry could only verify an amount of 3 million CDs. The claim was later contested by Group Indum, forcing it to take the issue to court for the needed settlement. In the said court filing against the finance ministry and some agencies, Group Indum, with several certificates, argued that the finance ministry, together with other government agencies, ordered more than 2.2 billion Ghana CDs. We are hearing that the Minister of Finance and Group Indum are expected to meet again to carry out another round of audits to establish the true position of the debt owed. It is not clear for now whether this admission by the finance ministry could lead to a dwell of the current case in court against it and the other government agencies. Delays in securing these funds had some serious impact on the operations of some subsidies of Group Indum, causing a struggle to pay clients. Now, Minister for Business Development, Dr. Mohammed Awal, says his outfit is keeping a close eye on all financial resources allocated to businesses in the country. Speaking to Joy Business ahead of the sector, the sector ministries meet the Paris series in Accra, Dr. Mohammed Awal assured that the Business Development Ministry has put in place right measures to ensure monies given out to businesses are used effectively. The ministry since its creation in 2017 has contributed millions of cities to the development of micro, small and medium-scale enterprises. For instance, over 10 businesses walked away with 300,000 cities in grants at the second edition of the presidential business speech. Earlier in the year, some 2 million cities was granted to women with disability engaged in business. Speaking to Joy Business, Sector Minister Dr. Mohammed Awal says the ministry, which is tasked to promote private sector development, is monitoring and evaluating all investments that have been made so far in the various businesses. As we speak now, Every quarter, they present reports. They monitor the businesses that we support, whether for training or for funding, and give us reports. And let me tell you that recovery is about 85% for all the loans we've given out in the last two years. And some of the money is not given directly by the ministry. We just link up businesses to sources of money. And don't, don't uh, forget, it's not just money we give them. We train them how to use their money, how to pitch, how to sell, and how to identify risks. So it's a whole package we give them so that the businesses can survive, they can grow, they can expand, and they can employ. Okay. So well, you as a one-on-one interview, how to come to Just, just come up. The minister is expected to interact with a section of journalists when the Business Development Ministry takes its turn in the Meet the Press series on Tuesday. For Joy Business, Karin Dodu. Now, Ghanaian businesses that export products to the UK will be compelled to pay charges on goods they export from next year after Britain exits the European Union. This should happen if government fails to sign a continuity agreement for its exporters to enjoy the benefits of the Economic Partnership Agreement. To this end, one of the major exporters of fruits into the UK, Golden Exotics, is appealing to government to engage the UK before the Brexit deadline to avoid collapse. Managing Director of Golden Exotic, Benedict Rich, has been speaking with Joy Business after a tour of his farm at the Sutrari in the Greater Accra region. Brexit's not, not arrived yet, but the issue is that all uh, the contracts for banana and, and usually pineapple are done yearly. So by the end of each year, you need to have your prices and your tenders for all of the supermarkets in Europe. And that process has started already. So if um, there's no deal on Brexit, and an agreement is not signed, then the importers will automatically add 114 euros a ton uh, for us for all the exports into the UK. And so we're already putting out tender documents and the supermarkets are automatically adding that 114 euros a ton because they don't see a signed agreement. Now, I'm sure that there will be an agreement on time, but I think that the time is now for us getting very short because 114 euros just to put it in perspective, turns a profit for us into a loss. Mr. Rich has also been impressing government to renegotiate a rollover of the EPA with the UK before October this year. 
most of those countries covered by the, the EPA um, and other banana producers across the globe have signed an interim agreement basically to roll over the same uh, agreement that they had with the EU. That's not to say that they like the agreement and I'm sure they would like to renegotiate it, but it's to recognize that given the um, chaos, I should say, in the UK side, there isn't time to negotiate with every country in the world. So the agreement should just be rolled over for now with the proviso that uh, it needs to be negotiated with different terms and conditions future, but it's an interim so that trade can continue while that happens. But don't you think that also presents you an opportunity to look out for other markets as well? We're always on the lookout for other markets. Um, we do rely a lot on the, the UK. The banana we produce suits very well the UK market. But for Ghana, I'm not sure us looking for other markets is necessarily the best thing because most of our sales to the UK are fair trade sales. And fair trade doesn't just benefit us, it benefits the community and the workers um, and development of the area as well, building schools, building hospitals. So we can get other sales to make up the difference. Given the shortage of time, it's not easy to find sales for what is, uh, say, 70,000 tons of bananas a year. Now, the West African Monetary Institute is raising concerns, inconsistency in policies, as well as other factors, is impeding trade growth among ECOWAS member countries. According to the Director General of the Institute, Dr. Eunice Ngozi Ibunga, there is a need for coordinated efforts among West African governments to deal with the situation. She spoke with Joy Business at the West African Nobles Conference on the theme, intra ECOWAS Trade, the journey so far. Ismak Aousa was there. The West Africa Monetary Institute says trade between Ghana and other ECOWAS member countries has the potential to grow if some limiting factors are removed. According to her, there is the need for concerted efforts to develop a comprehensive policy which spells out trade terms and conditions. The most important thing is for us to make sure that the intra ECOWAS trade, that most of our member states make sure that they, are, they sign and they make sure that they ratify all the protocols. That's number one. Some of us have not ratified all. I wouldn't call it interference. I'll call it, you know, um, um, inconsistency of policy. Not necessarily interference, but inconsistency of policy. Sometimes some of the some of the countries would mention some goods as goods that are. Uh, that um, have exemptions, and then before you get you, before you know what is happening, another set of goods are brought out as goods that have exemptions. The chairman for the conference, who is also the chancellor of Wisconsin International University College, Dr. Paul Finn, urged business owners to establish networks with other businesses in order to thrive. Learning from what others do is a valuable strategy for a poor business businesses, and it will help you stay on the cutting edge of technology and new business trends. These types of relationship and inside information can give you an advantage over your competitors. The old saying, it is not what you know, but who you know. May I state that the Noble Forum has no governmental, religious, or ethnic lineage. Its core mandate is to bring members together through periodic rapport, business meetings, networking conferences, and personal interactions. The West Africa Nobles Conference also featured an award and induction ceremony for new nobles. The forum, since its inception, has over 3,000 members identified across the sub-region. Bismarck Aousa, Joy Business. Young Business Live, let's now turn attention to one of our top stories today. Car Powership Ghana Company Limited says its 470 megawatts uh, Karandane's powership, Osman Khan, will be off the national grid on Tuesday, August 13, 2019, in preparation for the relocation of the power ship to the western region. The company released a statement to that effect this morning and uh, that's exactly what the company is saying, that Car Power Ship Limited wishes to announce to all its stakeholders um, 
that its 470 megawatt power ship Osman Khan will be off the grid on Tuesday, August 13. Now the power ship will depart from the Tema Fishing Harbour on Thursday, August 15, and would berth at its new location within the Second D Naval Base on Friday, August 16. In light of the relocation, the power ship will be off the national grid for a maximum period of 17 days to enable it to carry out various pre-commissioning works to successfully connect to the 330 kV transmission lines in Second D. The relocation is in line with government's strategic policy for the power ship to utilize natural gas from the Western Enclave. This will save the government millions of dollars annually. The company says it will keep all its stakeholders informed on further updates about the project. Meanwhile, Deputy Minister of Energy William Uriku Edu assures the current development will not impact the power supply for the period for the de decommissioning. He was speaking earlier on Joy Business via phone. The movement of car power, the car power ship makes up up to so almost 20% of the total um, national uh, consumption of power. And um, the movement of car power ship from Tema to Takrade is going to take that much from the generation um, um, for, for, for the country. But I'm happy to announce to your listeners and to the general uh, Ghanaian public that we've taken measures um, uh, to take um, care of that ma amount of um, energy being taken out of the system. We've taken measures to replace it. There shouldn't be any problem. And I can assure the good people of this country that this movement of car power from Tema to Takwade is not going to cause any um, uh, negative impact on the supply of energy. We've taken the necessary measures to make sure that we do not suffer any adverse effect in the national system. As you know, we have um, enough gas supply in the West, which is from the um, Sankofa field. So the decision is to move car power from Tema, which hitherto has been using HFO um, uh, to uh, it to use the natural gas that is coming from the ENI failed. For the fact that car power has announced this, the good people of this country would not even have known that the movement of the 450, 470 megawatts have been taken out of the system. We have taken enough measures, we have enough fuel for other um, generators to take care of this um, uh, reduction in the generation due to the movement of the car power ship from Tema to Takoradi. Um, these are localized. If anybody is experiencing any shortage of power or um, taking out of power to their, 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 their area, it is not necessarily doom so. If a car runs into a pole in your area, you will have, unfortunately, a problem with the supply of power. But as far as the classic definition of doom so is concerned, that's due to generation um, a shortfall, we do not have that problem. And that's an assurance coming to you from Deputy Energy Minister William Oreku Edu. Let's stay in energy matters. A new oil jetty in Takrade is to become operational by the 1st of October 2019 as part of the Takrade Port Expansion Works. Chairman for IBIS Tech, the local company undertaking the project, lawyer Kwame Jan, tells Joy Business in an interview the completed project, which is the largest in West Africa, will be ready to discharge 80,000 tons of petroleum products through existing pipelines in the Takrade port. Ibistec has a concession area of 61 hectares. Okay. Now, the concession area of 61 hectares is no land. It's all water, sea. It's part of the Harbour Basin. Wow. We are reclaiming that whole 61 hectares, turning it into land, paving the surface. Wow. So it's, it's not like there so is some land. Yes, we are reclaiming land. land from the sea. That's going to be a lot of and work. 61 and hectares. Money. So I'm just trying to make it more, make it clearer. Yeah. And a, a hectare is two and a half acres. Acres, yes. So 61 hectares is two and a half acres times 61. Yes. And an, an acre is the, the, the inner perimeter of a football field. Yes. So you are talking about um, 61 times two and a half football fields. Yes. Within this concession area, 
It's an old jetty. This jetty is the facility where vessels which carry petroleum products and um, diesel and petrol and so on, beauty men, to Takrade. That's where the vessels dock and discharge their contents and the contents go through pipelines. But this old jetty is up to minus 8.4 meters of draft. So only vessels with carrying capacity of about 20,000 tons can go to Takrade. That's small. Yes. Now, and they built this thing close to 100 years ago. So you should understand. The existing jetty sits in our concession area. And that area is going to be affected by reclamation. Okay. So whilst we were looking for the funding to do the container and multi-purpose terminal, and before the commencement of dredging, we partnered with GPHA to build a brand new jetty for petroleum products in the port of Takrade. You should go and see what we have done. I see. This jetty is the biggest and the most modern oil jetty in the whole of West Africa. I see. And it is on a draft of minus 14 meters. So what it means is vessels that are carrying probably up to 80,000 tons of petroleum products can dock in the new oil jetty in Takrade, which becomes partly operational by 1st of October this year. Meanwhile, lawyer Kwame Jan says the Takrade port expansion phase one project should be completed to accept larger vessels that carries about 19,000 containers to dock in two phases and within the next 24 months. He indicated that the port expansion is being undertaken and managed by Ghanaian companies. Big project which will run for the next six years. Okay. So we are doing it in phases. How many phases are we looking at? We're doing two phases. Two phases, okay. Phase one is seeking to make 600 meters of key wall available within the next 24 months. Okay. In fact, we have told the contractor that by September 2020, he should make us use part of the key. So from September 2020, the vessels we call the post Panamax. Okay. Yeah, these are vessels which are 360 meters long and with a width of 54 meters, they can come to Takrade. They can carry up to 19,000 containers each. Each. They can come to Takrade. So in, in terms of tonnage, what will it be? Um, I, can't, I can't say in tonnage, but we are talking about 20-footer containers. Oh, 20-footer containers. 19,000 of them That's on huge. one vessel. That's huge. Sailing to a port in this country, in Takrade. And the port... It's a Ghanaian port, built, owned, and operated by Ghanaians. I see. So we certainly should finish the first 600 meters, which is phase one, maximum 24 months, and then we'll continue the rest of the key length. And we expect that by five years from now, we would have done the entire key length of 700 plus 790 um, meters with okay. key wall. For key wall. Then that will bring the port expansion project to its logical conclusion. Conclusion. But within 24 months, the facility will be available for use. If at the moment, a year, we're doing some 55,000, when you are done with your first phase, how many are you looking at? Um, at the commissioning uh, on Friday, the director of Takrade Port said, is anticipating that within the first year of commissioning, so within the year 2021, yeah. we should be doing about 200,000 containers in 2021. Interesting developments there within the petroleum industry. Now, crop protection experts and researchers at the multinational seed producing and protection company, Syngenta Crop Protection, are recommending seed treatment to help address the menace of four army worm in the affected countries. The continuous invasion of the four army worm pests has been devastated have devastated large tracts of maize farms, pushing many farmers out of business. Head of Seed Care Institute of North American at the Sigenta Group Crop Protection, Dr. Ravi Ramachandran, has been speaking to Prince Appiah at the 2019 World Congress of the International Federation of Agriculture Journalists, IFAG, in Minneapolis, USA. I think seed treatment is uh, essential because uh, 
when you coat uh, treatment, either fungicide or insecticide, on the seed, it helps to protect the early season diseases and insects, pests that attack a young seedling. And that's very important to protect because growers are investing on expensive uh, genetics and traits, and therefore seed treatment is like uh, almost uh, applying an insurance on uh, protecting the investment of the grower as well, as well as protecting against early season disease. In order to have a high yielding seed, you need to have a good quality seed. For example, in Africa, the fall army worm is big and that is devastating. And this is where seed treatment will be a powerful tool. We just launched a product and we are introducing that in Africa called uh, Fortenza. Uh, and the Fortenza and Fortenza Duo, which is a combination of Fortenza and uh, Cruiser. And this is an excellent product for fall army worm and in fact, all our trials have shown in South Africa and some of the East uh, Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, in the Tanzania areas, yields are tremendously gone up by protecting those seeds. So we are going to work with the local seed industry experts and then help them understand some of these knowledge about well, how do you produce a good quality seed, how do you... And that's it for Business Live tonight. Thank you very much for your company. For more business news, log on to myjohnline.com business. My name is Imano Apuaji Yavi. Have a great holiday.